thaiscuba.com. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen these pictures where like half of the shot is on top of the water, the other half is underwater, and it's really intriguing how these two elements combine in one shot. However, the nicer and cleaner you get that wave line across your picture, the more beautiful it will really turn out. Now the really nice half and half shots are usually taken with top of the line cameras with underwater housings and dome lenses. Now these cameras are awesome, but they will set you back several thousands of dollars. You may be happy to see that these pictures I show to you, I took myself with just this action cam. And right here, this dome port, specifically made for half-half shots, that I made for a budget of about $25. That's it. As an important remark, I want to state again that this design is only meant for half over half under shots and not for complete submersion in water. This housing does not replace a camera housing for scuba diving. The idea of this dome part works for a number of camera models, so it's not at all restricted to the action cam. It works with GoPros, it works with pretty much any compact camera. And the principle, the design of it, even works with full frame or DSLR cameras. You just have to make a bigger housing and something that goes a bit further back to accommodate your camera shape. There is only one, one thing that your camera has to bring along and it's the capability to be controlled remotely. For my action cam, as with any action cam, I have the live view remote, which is basically a remote control with a built-in screen. However, if you do not have that, a lot of the current camera models that are being sold on the market can be controlled with an app. Uh, go start downloading for the Sony, it's the Play Memories Mobile, they're the action cam. A, a lot of the manufacturers, they have apps where you can control your camera through your phone. And this is what you need, because your camera will be encased in this housing and you will not be able to press the shutter yourself. So this or that and you're set. The most important element of your dome port is, of course, your acrylic dome. Uh, this is the centerpiece of everything. Uh, okay, now be informed, you don't need to look for this in hardware stores, department stores, or any other regular stores. Uh, you will not find them. There's only two ways you can do it. Number one, try and source it online. Uh, go into Google and search acrylic dome. And you will come up with a lot of results, some of them Amazon, some of them Alibaba, there's a lot of great Chinese manufacturers that can handle this. Okay, the second option is to find one by yourself, but you'll have to source an acrylic display manufacturer. I found one here in Bangkok at Town & Town, and uh, they actually had sizes from this, 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 up to that size. So that was, that was jackpot. Huh? So the dome part, most important thing is you want to make sure it's about this size. This is a, about an 8 to 9 inch dome port and it's perfect. It feels a bit like half of a volleyball, then it's right. No? From your lens to the front of the port is a good 4 to 5 inches and you will get a really nice shot 50-50 every time. The second factor you need to consider choosing a dome, it needs to have this rim around here, this flange, because you will need to screw and bolt it to the other half of your dome port. So once you managed to find this acrylic dome, the second challenge is to find the counterpart, basically the bottom of the housing, that has exactly the same diameter. Uh, and it also needs to have a flat rim at the top so you can attach the two together. Make sure the plastic bowl you get is deep enough to accommodate the overall length of your camera. If you build your dome port for a compact camera, make sure this length is measured with the camera turned on and the lens extended. The extended lens should not protrude into the space of the dome. For full frame cameras with detachable lenses, choose the widest lens you have, the wider the better. And instead of just a bowl, you will need something a bit deeper like a plastic bucket. So to design the inside of your dome port, you first need to determine the distance between the center of your lens down to the bottom of your camera. The center of the lens, of course, has to be centered with the dome port. So at that distance, down to the camera bottom, you will have to accommodate a platform to place the camera on. Now the rest of that interior, let's call it, is completely freestyle. 
um, you do need to place that camera in exactly that position on that platform but how you design the way you hold the camera inside is completely up to you. In my case I use these interlocking plywood sheets uh, put them together so there would be this box shaped area in the middle I suspended the camera in foam board type of material on the back of the plastic bowl I cut a hole with a jigsaw uh, rectangular with rounded corners just a little wider than the box of the plywood inside so it can be placed in its old position without falling to the interiors and I attach it to the outside of the, the plastic bowl uh, make sure anything that penetrates the plastic bowl has to be sealed with um, silicone as, as well as possible then I added a cover made from plywood on top of that plywood I then applied a black foam mat this area of the dome part it's very important to keep black and non-reflective. At this point, I drilled holes in the plastic bowl rim and the rim of the dome in respective positions. Apply silicone all the way and press the dome in place. Add bolts and nuts to each hole and make sure everything is completely sealed with silicone. While you're working with your dome, make sure it stays protected against scratches and silicone stains. In the end, add silicone all around in the crease where the two parts meet. If you use your phone as a remote control, you will need a phone holder to keep it in place and also out of the water. I made this one here from very simple foam board and put it in place with double-sided tape. Alternatively, you may opt to look into car phone holders and glue the suction cup to the housing. Try and protect your dome when you handle and transport it with a cushion cover. Actually, before we seal the camera inside, we may have to look into your remote control again. An action cam can be turned on and off with the live view remote, so actually you don't need this phone holder. However, if you use your phone as a remote control, what are the options? In many cases, the camera apps are great for controlling the camera, but you cannot turn them on and off. In that case, you may have to turn on your camera before you seal it inside the dome port. It is probably good if you turn off the battery safe or sleep mode, so your camera doesn't shut itself off when it's inside the housing. Alternatively, you may have to take a picture at least once every minute to keep the camera from falling asleep. Through the hole in the back, I place my camera now take some duct tape and tape it shut with a white strip starting across the bottom. Now this will not yet be sufficient to keep water outside since there are always cavities taking in water where the tapes overlap. You need a second layer. Prepare a round patch cut from a plastic bag and place a few folded sheets of tissue paper on the lid. Now tape everything shut as well as possible. There will be a bit of water penetrating the outer layer, but it will be absorbed by the tissue and should not penetrate the housing. Protect your phone from splash water with a seal bag. Even a Ziploc bag will do. The phone should never be submerged underwater anyways. Then strap it on with rubber bands. You can still control the touch screen through the bags. Using an action cam, just use a library remote and hold it in your hand. Do not put it around your wrist. However, it's advisable to use a lanyard in case you drop it. Depending on the camera model you're using, you may have to look into different alternatives of designing the entry port where you place your camera. If you're using a compact camera, which is essentially wider than this opening, you may have to look into cutting your plastic bowl around the outside here. Either way you would have to make sure it is taped shut and you would have to add a second layer of protection with some sort of absorbent tissue on the inside. Alternatively you may look into buying two of these bowls. On the outer one that you stack on top you just cut off that rim and you would have an overlap area here that you can tape off like that. Should you opt to have a design for a larger full frame or DSLR camera, in this case I would opt to cut 
the top of the bucket and not the back because here this is perfect access for your camera and the lower half of your design will always be completely waterproof no matter what. So here's some tips on how to shoot it right because there's a lot you need to know. Number one, you want to set your camera to burst mode. Don't do a single shot. Um, don't do like 20, 20 frames per second or so, even if your camera can do it, it's not necessary. Um, five frames per second is good enough. However, you want to do it for a duration of about two seconds. I took a picture of my son taking a flip into the pool. That starts where he's running, he's in midair, he splashes in the water and he goes under. So this is the perfect shot because it shows the action above and below the water in context. The same I recommend for shooting in the ocean. In a set of 10 pictures, there is always one where the shape of the wave looks perfect. This is what you're aiming for and it's only possible in burst mode. So assuming you're doing ocean photography, um, okay, number one, bring your fins because you need to transport yourself forward, backward to where you're shooting. Number two, bring your mask because you need to see underwater what it is you're shooting before you frame your shot. Number three, okay, do not bring your snorkel, it will just bother you. There's too much happening already. Number four, and this is very important, put on a life vest. It's not that we don't know how to swim, we do, but as a photographer you want to be as still as possible when you're taking pictures. So if you're finning, trying to stay buoyant, it's not beneficial for your shots. Bring a life vest, it'll make your life a lot easier. Number five, if you have the option of having a buddy backing you up on like a dinghy or a surfboard, that would be a great bonus because he will have to be there with a microfiber cloth and every now and then wipe off the drops from your dome port. So number six, how to commute. As you're, as you're um, finning over to where it is you want to take your pictures, make sure the entire dome port is out of the water and try as much as possible to just submerge the lower half. Try and keep the top part of the dome as dry as possible. Well, that's all for today's episode of DIY Scuba Stuff. I hope you have just as much fun with your dome port as I do with mine. It's a great thing to bring on your scuba trips or even the pool with your kids. Have a good one. Hope to see you next time.